good morning and good morning and welcome to everyone to the sixth session of our webinar series being conducted by bs anangpuria educational institute faridabad myself pooja arora assistant professor department of management studies and i on behalf of bs anangpuria educational institute thankful to 380 participants who have joined us in today's webinar and at the same time i want to convey a sincere gratitude to all those participants who are regularly joining our webinars since the beginning maintaining the precedent in today's webinar also we have diversified audience including 150 students 15 research scholars and 215 faculty members and that too from around 250 institutions across the india thank you once again for joining ever since the human civilization existed art has become a integral part of it and with the passage of time art has also evolved from religious purposes to aesthetic and objective purposes art is often considered as a reflection of socio economic and cultural conventions and development prevailing at a particular time zone therefore the people community and a country always try to preserve the rare arts moreover since ages collection of rare arts has been considered as a status symbol consequently creates a huge demand for it who would have ever thought that leonardo da vinci rediscover painting of jesus christ as salvatore mundi has the only painting in the private hand has been sold as a most expensive painting till date amounting 405.3 million dollar now it can rightly be said that art can do more brightening a living space the art market has been uh, has become one of the hottest new investment crazes in recent year painting and sculpture collectors frequently buy pieces with an eye toward adding their investment portfolio but will art investment really earn you a profit or is this new asset class mostly hype to enlighten with us today on this topic we have with us dr saurabh ghosh an expert advisor of this alternative investment option without further ado i would like to request mrs kamna singh ma'am head department management study to welcome and introduce our guest over to you ma'am please thank you so much pooja ma'am good morning to one and all present here i kamna head department of management studies at bs anangpuria institute of technology and management faridabad on behalf of institute welcome you all it gives me an immense pleasure to introduce today's speaker for the webinar dr saurabh ghos dr saurabh ghos has been working with kotak mahindra bank for the past 13 years and at present is executive vice president and national product manager distribution and excel and it's based out of their head office in mumbai prior to his time with kotak mahindra bank he has had stays with icici bank and idbi bank also dr saurabh has completed his phd in management where his topic was valuation of art as an investment a study on miniature paintings in india apart from this he is a certified jyotish praveen and jyotish visharad from the indian council of astrological sciences dr sorov has been a keen collector of indian art especially handwritten manuscripts miniature paintings and modern indian art so today's webinar constitute a discussion of the trend around the rise of art as an alternative investment the discussion will look at how investors are treating art as an asset class and how art compares to more traditional assets such as equities and bonds etc investments are important because in today's world just earning money is not enough you work hard for the money you earn so you need to make your money work hard for you as well this is why you invest now dr saurav host will lead the program and will give overview on the topic alternative investment options art as an alternative investment welcome you sir welcome dr saurav sir now i would like to hand over the session to pooja ma'am over to you pooja ma'am
uh, thank you so much ma'am for such a uh, uh, such a good introduction for, uh, to our guest uh, before start the session i would like to apprise certain instruction about this webinar dear participant your active participation is anticipated throughout the session we are open to participant questions which you can write in in the chat box the question answer round will be held post talk for 15 minutes attendance will be taken on the basis of feedback form link of the feedback form will be provided during question and answer round in the chat box in the chat box itself e certificate will be issued on the basis of feedback form so it is requested to fill your feedback form diligently and correctly it is requested to please switch off your videos and bear with us throughout the session up till now this is all from my side now i would request uh, to dr saurabh ghosh sir to please proceed the session welcome sir we are really excited to hear from you over to you sir please uh, thank you dr kamna ma'am thank you kuja ma'am and thank you to the institute uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you right this is a very uh, interesting topic on which i am going to speak today and i'm sure all of you would find it useful uh, and if not useful from the investment point of view at least from the knowledge point of view because this is something which is an alternative investment option and i would try to uh, take you through the journey of art yeah so uh, this is how the presentation would flow today so i'll give you a basic introduction about the topic uh, we'll discuss about the various avenues of alternative investments available today with all of us uh, we'll have a talk on the global art market uh, then the indian art market of course uh, a small uh, session on the market for antiquities and miniature paintings because that is very close to my heart uh, and then uh, we'll talk about the well known indian artists uh, how the high net worth individuals in india are supporting the cause for art art as an investable asset is it so uh, the main variables that affect the art market and also the variables that affect the price of art then because most of us here are uh, people from the academic uh, 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 from the academia so i would we support art as an investable asset then we talk about the catches the art market opportunities in and finally so and uh, if you see each uh, topic is uh, having a background of a painting done by some of india's top artists and the painting in the background here is by one of our most well known artists who passed away a couple of years back uh, shri s h raza so uh, from the point of view of art as an investment uh, with a lot of uh, information efficiency that has come into uh, the uh, the overall industry and overall our lives Uh, we have come into uh, we have got uh, access to a lot of information over a period of time and that has made uh, a lot of options open to us over these last 10 or 12 years and one of them is of course art right so uh, we will here in this study see how the indian art market has performed as far as the global art market is concerned and we'll also see how going forward art as an investment 
can be added as one of the investment options in your overall investment kitty so we we'll start off with whatever other alternative investments available to us we all know everything about mutual funds about fixed deposits about national saving schemes about various reserve bank of india bonds that are available right but we also know that there are people who invest in alternative investments and make a killing out of it so some of these alternative avenues of investments are real estate gold jewelry commodities stamps right there are people who collect stamps and uh, you would be surprised to know and a lot of people would also know that the queen of england is one of the biggest stamp collectors and it is said that the collection is worth more than 100 million dollars 100 million pounds sorry and then uh, old and important pens uh, we have uh, antiquities and collectibles rare coins right so uh, rare coins is another thing which is a very big collectible in recent auction Uh, of coins which is taking place by one of the most respected uh, respected uh, uh, coin uh, auction houses todiwala we have a ba- babar gold coin a coin belonging to the emperor babar and who, which which has a weight of only 0.4 grams right 0.4 grams and it is priced at a lower estimate of 3 and a half lakh of rupees so coins are some people are very passionate about coins then we have people who collect watches people who invest in hedge funds private equity and of course venture investments right so we have a lot of meetings i have attended a few meetings where there are venture capitalists come from in country and abroad to find out for good investment opportunities and they invest in in new venture so these are the avenues which are open to us right now we go to the global art market the global art market has had a total sale of last year of around 64.1 billion which is slightly lower than the year previous to that which was about 67.1 billion dollars it is growing steadily over the last about a decade or so after the market crash of 2008 onwards uh, the market of course is dominated by a few large volume artists and a few large galleries right uh, still artists uh, artists who are named here modgali and and van gogh have a huge market price which they have and whenever there's an auction if one of these artists are there in the in the lineup you are assured of a good for your auction uh, if we see the us continue to dominate the overall art markets with a 44% share the overall art market followed by uk and china at 20 and 18 respectively i'm sorry this is actually a bit slow i think i'll have to take off from the presentation mode and go to the normal mode so that is what i'm going to do
yeah so i'll go like this i think uh, this would be like uh, better so if we see continuing on the global art market scene the higher end of the market has been always buoyant right and if you, uh, there's a concept called guarantees so a lot of the large works that come into the market are already guaranteed by either the gallery or by large buyers right so that ensures that large uh, large value paintings they have a good opening in the uh, auction and they don't go unsold right secondly we have a substantial increase in the online sales as i was mentioning at the beginning of my talk that there's been a significant significant ri rise in knowledge about various things and one of the biggest contributors to that is online information available to people so online sales is accessible to almost 95% of the galleries and people who sell art today right say so we have the art hubs developing across the globe initially at about 10 to 12 years back we had only a few art hubs which were there in new york london uh, paris and to some extent hong kong now it has spread across to the middle east to asia to china to latin america africa and all of us would be uh, surprised to know that the middle east at the moment uh, especially the uae is and saudi arabia are emerging as one of the highest one of the most happening hotspots of art right and the artwork that was mentioned by pooja ma'am Uh, in her introductory talk and which we will also talk at the end of my uh, this speech was purchased from one in the Sa saudi by the by the saudi arabian royal family right so uh, apart from that if you see that people who are interested in art have increased uh, exponentially right so why the figures are available till 1970 only but if you see that in 1945 there were only about 0.5 million people who were interested in art and in 1970 there were 70 odd million people who were interested so obviously the investments in art would go up and i think at this point of time if we make a safe guess there would be at least uh, 3 to 400 million people who would be interested in art and who would be actively following the art market as investment options as i mentioned before uh, if you see the us leads the art market share by value and we have a 44% whopping 44% share of the overall art market which is there held by the US, united states followed by uk then china and of course we have other countries and india comes in the rest of the world because the indian art market in spite of being quite old one of the oldest art scenes in the world is Uh, relatively nascent as far as overall sales is concerned right as i mentioned to you that uh, the sales uh, overall art market sales was 64.1 billion in 2019 as against 67.7 billion in the previous year out of which 58% is accounted of the sales are accounted by dealers and we have about 42% of sales done by galleries right so while the there is a degrowth in the overall value of sales if you see from 67 to 64 billion dollars the there's been a there has been a significant growth in the overall volume of sales 
so the number of artworks that have come up for sale and which have been sold have gone up and if you see the value has had a growth of about 62% from 2009 so in a decade it has shown a growth of 62% and over volume terms it's a 34% growth so if you all those people who are thinking and who are just thinking about art as an investment you can see the risks that could be generated just by the values of art that is being sold at this point of time of course we'll come to the topic of investment value more in more detail later on right if you see that, and according to wealth insight the number of millionaires held more than 362 billion in investments in luxury goods in 2012 and this figure went up to 621 billion which is a cagr of around 10.34% in these i think about 5 odd years right us and china have the maximum number of millionaires right who are investing into luxury goods and india has a very significant growth rate of 23% of our millionaires and our investors investing into luxury goods so art generally falls under the uh, overall ambit of luxury goods right so we have if you see this chart here we have india which is growing at 35 which has grown at around 35% cagr from 2008 to 2012 and from 2000 and 13 to 17 there has been a growth of 23 odd percent which highest in the world as far as luxury investments are concerned right so that was what was there about the world art market we now come to the indian art market right so when we talk about the indian art market the indian art market as an overall share of the world art market is substantially low right so we have about 8 or 9% of in the overall world art market right but most of the sales that happen here is in un uh, unrecognized sectors and they are not actually shown in records so that is why we do not feature anywhere in any la large reports but having said that we've had a very good growth during the period of 2004 to 2008 in our art markets and the main growth was uh, actually cut short due to the subprime crisis in 2008 and 9 otherwise we had shown very significant growth at that point of time the auction market in india is about 75 million dollars in 2019 as per the r3 art market report and again as in the world art markets also there are a few indian art galleries like saffron art ashtagru and kundolis and we have a few large global players like christie sadabes and bonhams which dominate the indian art market and we would all be surprised to know that the value of art that is sold abroad the value of indian art that is sold abroad is much more than what is sold within india right so the global leaders like christie sadabes and bonhams though they have very businesses in india right they have annual sales and they what they call the asia weeks twice in a year and where they have sale of indian and islamic art and there are huge turn turnovers in those arts right and if you see art tactic did a survey among all art investors and they have 95% of the respondents said that they they had a positive view on the art market in india now we'll come to some facts and figures right so the overall turnover in auction in the year 2019 and 20 was about 559.7 crores 559 almost 560 crores 
turnover was there in auction sales out of which and there were about 2374 artworks that were sold the top 10 artworks together actually contributed to about 164 crores out of this 560 crores right there were 133 artworks which broke their records various records right and the modern category right the modern category of artworks actually contributed to 86.5% of the turnover so generally we talk about the modernists who who were who started their work somewhere in the early uh, 20th century and till the late 20th century right we have the contemporary artists who are who are working and we have the modernists who were active in the late 18th a 19th century and in the early part of 20th century right so if you see uh, there are 539 artists who took part in various across uh, last year out of which the pre modern artists were 37 modern artists were 168 and contemporary artists were 334 so if you could relate to the last chart a last table that we showed the maximum turnover were uh, Uh, clocked by the modern artists but the number of modern artists were actually not the most they were the contemporary artists but their turnover were lesser than that of the modern artists right so uh, coming to the auction houses the top 3 auction houses as far as the turnover auction turnover is concerned were saffron art right so saffron art incidentally started off in the year 2000 when the art scene was starting off um, quite uh, yeah and it was in the nascent uh, stages and it was started off by a husband wife duo of deepak and meenal wazirani in mumbai and they are ex investment bankers and they are the top in uh, auction house of india today and they sold about 280 art works worth about 150 crores last year then we had sadabis who sold off 182 art works worth 125 crores and christies which sold off 107 art works worth 100 crores of rupees now we come to the uh, very important area of art if you see here that what the, the art generally traditionally the sale happens in an auction in a live auction people participate they raise their hands they raise a board and they say that yes i am bidding on this particular thing but slowly and steadily the online market has also picked up and if you see the online while the live auction contributes to a majority of the turnover but if you see that the tier 6 it, that is the that is where the 5 lakh below 5 lakh options come in right we have a huge number of people purchasing online for artworks which are worth less than 5 lakhs so which means that there's a lot of interest that is being built up amongst new collectors and people who are getting initiated into the art world now we come so here we see that online as a total percentage still has a very low turnover vis-a-vis -vis the live auction that uh, sales are concerned but if you see the number of works being sold online are much more than what are being sold live so you would be again uh, one small piece of information now in this time of covid a lot of large auction houses across the world especially sadabis right they have tied up together to form an online 
auction sort of syndicate and they are selling off their uh, wares through one online platform so that more and more people could get access to artworks across galleries so that is one thing that they have done so this uh, these are the new sort of uh, marketing uh, tactics people have adopted to during the uh, during times of uncertainty like the times we are facing at this point of time now we come to what are the works that actually sell and i'm telling you all these things because if anyone has an interest in investing in art we should all know that what is it that sells and what is it that you need to know to invest in art right so if you see here canvas has been an all time favorite so if you have to then work which has been worked which is a work on paper and if you have an mf hussain work which has been which is done on canvas all other things being equal the work on canvas is likely to fetch a higher price right so this shows the turnover of various materials so work on canvas actually we had say four works which sold for 313 crores whereas our uh, works on paper sold for around 30 odd crores right so as i was mentioning that who are the people who actually drove the market in india so if you are looking at investing today so the best bet for investments is a modern art work a, a modern artist so who are the people i'll name a few uh, so people like mf hussain people like sh raza people like krishan khanna people like gade uh, uh, people like kulkarni people like uh, vikash bhattacharya ganesh pain they are the people who are modern artists right and then we have the contemporary artists so contemporary artists are the people who are still working right so people like jitish kallat people like subodh gupta people like uh, uh, atul dodia uh, reena saini kallat so these are the people who are the contemporary artists then we have the pre modern artists so people uh, who are no longer there like raja ravi varma right like uh, haldankar sl haldankar so these are people who are named are the pre modern artists so we had modern artists who sold the most with 345 crores and they, then we had the pre modern artists who sold for around 3.8 crores so key comparisons between the two years right so as we all know the price actually came down the overall turnover actually came down to 560 crores to 700 crores in the previous years but if you see the number of works that were actually offered and sold you will see that there has been a significant increase right so 2374 works actually sold last year visa v 1453 works that sold the year before last and if you see what is the sell through rate sell through rate is the rate at if a piece of art is put up for auction does this sell at the first go so we have a 91.5% for say through rate in the year 2019 and 20 whereas the same was 90.3% a year back right now i'll come to a very interesting topic which is called the market for Uh, antiquities and miniature paintings now people who are thinking of investing in art can also have a look at investing in antiquities and miniature paintings and these are some small figures where when when saffron art started its online auctions on antiquities and miniature paintings in in 13 in december 2011 there were hardly 15 lots right 
now those, those figures went up to 2.48 million and 70 lots by 2015 so you can see is we for for activities right and this is also supported by a chola bronze parvati right uh, not a chola bronze it is a uh, sorry a vijayanagar bronze of the 15 16 century which fetched almost 900 981000 us dollars in the auction right as against an auction estimate of only 121 thousand years dollars similarly a pair of ragmala paintings of the basholi school right basholi school incident happens to be one of the oldest schools and one of the one of the most priceless schools of miniature paintings which sold for 145000 dollars each so auction houses like christies sotheby's and bonham's philips have started antiquities and miniature painting auctions right however there's been a lack of transparency as far as the rules governing sale and purchase of antiquities and also a proper pricing mechanism for sale of antiquities so my phd topic was finding a a, a proper pricing mechanism for miniature paintings right so which which actually got uh, quite useful feedback from a lot of galleries and a lot of museums now we come to uh, indian artists right so if you are looking at investing in art who are the artists who actually you should look at right so of course uh, there are various ways of investing in art people there are a lot of people who would like to catch hold of artists when they are starting off there are a lot of people who would like to invest in antiquities and old paintings and there are people who like to invest in established names right so uh, uh, there are uh, if we take indian artists so there there are about 5 to 7 indian artists who feature in the top 500 list of artists Uh, uh published by artprice.com and it is led by sh raza taib mehta and mf hussain so all of us have heard their names i'm sure and they all belong to a group called the progressive group now this progressive group was found uh, founded in 1947 by hussain raza souza right and uh, they were a group who had mostly been trained in europe mostly in france right and they had come back and uh, they thought that the indian uh, pre modernists uh, basically the bengal school of art actually did not show art as it should be and then they started off on their journey and they are the most successful group of artists today and they they actually Uh, command the highest prices as far as auctions are concerned today right so if you if we were to see that who are the top 3 indian artists for last uh, financial year we have mf hussain who had a turnover of 79 crores uh, with the sale of 109 artworks now 109 artworks being sold in auctions is a huge number of artworks right then we have vs gaitonde who sold off 13 artworks with about 78 crores of turnover so see uh, uh, gaitonde why gaitonde is said to be one of the first uh, one of the few artists who is world class as far as his prices are concerned this is mainly because of the fact that he painted very few works of art when he was asked by uh, some gallery owner dadiba pundol uh, some uh, 15 20 years back i think 30 years back that why don't you paint more frequently why don't you have more paintings being churned out he says he said that i paint in my head 
So I need not come out on canvas uh, or on paper. I paint in my head. So that is why Gaitonde's works are very, very limited. They, they, are, they are very seldom found. And if you see while Hussein's work, there were 109 of them, which sold for 79 crores. 13 works of Gaitonde raised about 78 crores, almost the same amount, right? And then we have uh, SH Raza at 51 works sold for 66 crores, right? So sources are all given at the bottom of the tables, right? So if someone wants to uh, uh, refer to them, they can always do so. Now, these are the top five artworks which sold last year, right? So we have, again, Gaitonde, whose work, untitled work, sold for around 26 crores last year, 27 odd crores last year. Then we have Bhupen Khakkar, we have uh, Said Hader Raza, we have again another Gaitonde, and we have Tayab Mehta. So these are the top five works. And if you see, they have fetched huge uh, uh, amounts in auctions, more than 20 crores, right? So, so if you happen to own one of these works of one of these artists, uh, you are assured of a good return over a period of time. So number of artists, uh, artists who participated in 2019-20 was 539, whereas the same number was 312. So which actually means that more number of artists are coming forward to give their works for auction. So which actually means that we have more participation in the market. The more participation we have in the market, the broader the market becomes and the more transparent the chances of the market becomes, right? Now we come to the fact that what is the, where is, where are the sales coming from, right? So uh, say I can afford a work, to, say till up to five lakhs or 10 lakh of rupees, but who are the people who are actually purchasing the works of worth 20 lakhs, 25, 25 crores, 20 crores, etc. right? So if you see the Indian high net worth individual population has actually increased like mad, right? And the wealth with them has also gone up tremendously. As of 2017, they had about 1,067 US billion dollar worth of wealth. And this was distributed amongst 263 high net worth individuals, right? So some of these individuals also help towards art and art and philanthropy. So they contribute towards various, various art initiatives like development of artists, like public space development for artworks. Uh, all of us who have traveled in the Bombay uh, uh, Mumbai airports, we have seen large installations which have been installed there, large works of art. So these are public places where artworks have been put up that people get These are the source and support of institutions and where is the support coming from? So individuals and institutions form a of the support that is to uh, given to the works of art, right? So now we come to the important topic of art as an investable asset, right? So traditionally it has been considered as a source of aesthetic value, right? Now it has emerged as slowly emerged as a major asset class, right? With the growth in world economies, with disposable incomes going up, with the buoyant art market, which are giving consistent returns, with easily accessible artworks and online galleries opening up, and the information on artworks coming up. So today, if you want to see that whatever has been the return on MFN over the last 10 years, you can get that information.
if you want to see what are the returns on the in you can have a look at right so these are information reports is papers that are get published so more and more information comes out people become more and more invested in such things right and with rates of interest going across the world we see people searching for avenues where they can get a better return so art happens to be one of them right investment Yeah, I'm sorry. I think I got dropped. Yeah. So, um, investment advisory services are advising client to invest in art for de-risking the returns, right? De-risking the and art value of art also increases because of the rarity with come which comes along with it. So, for example, the Salvador Mundi that sold. sometimes back in 2017 it got fetch such a high price because it is a rare work since two th since 1909 this is the only work of leonardo da vinci which has been found so if you see these are the rarities which are associated with art works which increase their mass appeal and their prices right apart from the these we have loan guarantee art guarantees we have loans for purchase of art we have art insurance we have art storage we have loans against art works which are making people invest more and more on art because liquidity increases by investing in art so just to give you an example on the returns that can be generated by investing in art so here we have a maqbool fida hussain artwork which is one of his iconic works it is called the battle of ganga and jamuna right so we have this this is a large trick which is about 74 by 107 inches right it was sold in 2009 2000 december for a paltry sum of 25, 25 lakh rupees right but finally when it sold in 2020 the returns that it generated was almost 22% because it sold for 13 and a half crores so you can see that by staying invested in an artwork and by staying invested in in works of artists who are known as the brand ambassadors of indian art you can always be assured of a good return right very few other asset classes give us a return of 22 and a half percent over 20 years right so now we come to what are the variables that affect the art market so just like the stock markets have various variables which affect it right so uh, tensions with neighbors affect stock markets right so we have some bad news in the economy the art markets are affected we have some good things some return coming out from our industry the stock market positively impacted so what are the variables that impact the art so we have rule regulations which is very important so some country have very, very seamless rules and regulations for art markets so that has made, like us is one of them which has made art very very popular 
in the US, right? Pricing and valuation of art and provenance of artworks are very are very, very important. Then we have guarantees and loans against hard works. So some foreign banks in India also give loans against works of art, right? Then we know have what are the geographical locations of the artwork, right? So if the artworks are situated in large cities from where they can be easily uh, transported, where people can easily come and see them, then you can always ask for a better price and the markets in those locations are likely to go up, right? Similarly, what are the data available for the artworks of that country? So up to about five years, six years back, there was hardly any data as available for works of Indian art, but now they are available. So as a result, we have a substantially growing art market in India. So now we say that what are the variables that affect the price of an artwork? As we said that a work on canvas fetches higher prices. So similarly, these are some of the things that we need to keep in mind while investing in art. One of them is provenance as to where that artwork is coming from. The second is authenticity, right? Whether that artwork is from an authentic source, right? So provenance and authenticity are the main things that drive the worth of art, right? Then whether they have been published previously or not or displayed pre previously, exhibited previously or not. Right. So we have people where we have that this has been published in the year 1949 or in the Lalit Kala Academy Journal of Fine Arts. So that works worth goes up tremendously because people know that this is something which is a valuable and an authentic work. Then we have schools. Right. So we have the Bengal school. We have the progressives. So, so we have the Delhi Shilp Chakra. So all these people, they formed various schools. And in old places, we had the various schools of miniature paintings, etc. So they also make a huge difference. So as I spoke about the Basholi School, right, the Kangra School, these are the schools which fetch huge prices in auctions. So some artworks that Salvatore Mundi again quoting the same work it it was made in the year 1580 right so because it is such an old work it becomes a rare work and I'm a rare artist so that is why such a right then the condition of the work you should always keep in mind and whenever you are purchasing art you should always remember what is the condition of the work and if the condition of the work is not good, the prices would likely not go up or would not fetch such great prices, right? Then rarity, as we spoke, that Gaitonde's works are rare because he hardly painted a lot of canvases, right? So that those are things that need to be kept in mind. Then we have ascribed and attributed to or signed works. So if you see in the same auction, a Hussein work which is signed will fetch you almost the double price, whereas a work which is not signed by the artist may not fetch such a high price. So please look up close to the on the artwork and see whether that artwork is signed by the artist or not. If it is signed, it fetches a better value for the artist. Finally, it is subject matter and size. And though we cannot always uh, make art as a commodity, but still a uh, lot of artists sell by per square inch value. 
so we should keep in mind that what is the size of the work which we are purchasing and the sub subject matter right so sometimes subject matters become very very difficult right hey, very very important and we have to keep in mind whether that subject matter is important and whether that will fetch a good price or not right now we have a support material which i wanted to share with you which i think i'll skip because of the fact that uh, we are running out of time uh, we will just come to now this thing which is challenges that we face in the art market right so what is there is there is still very little research that is been conducted on the indian mar art market there needs to be a proper regulatory framework which needs to guide the art market and an art exchange just as we have a stock exchange if it is set up actually helps us in purchasing so everyone cannot afford a 25 crore hussain right so if we so someone says that you can purchase three units in a big painting of hussain a lot of people may get interested right so that is why uh, an exchange would make a lot of difference there is a need for an agency for authentication of artworks and most importantly there is no agency which fixes a rate for art so artworks need to be priced properly which is very very important so here there were the art dealers and art collectors were asked about what were the top challenges they thought were in the next which would be there in the next 5 years and the dealers said that finding new clients the economy and the demand for art and antiquities participation in fairs because of the fact of closed down and lockdowns internet and other online sales etc form some of the challenges which they said they would be facing over the next 5 years then what are the risks and opportunities the risks that are there is so it is an evolving market it is still unregulated right mostly there is no defined uh, valuation model there is large scale forgery right there is no proper way in which works could be conserved so lot of conservation uh, policies and lot of conservation Uh, uh, this thing uh, agencies have opened up but we recently saw that in spain one conservation which happened with uh, the the painting of mother mary actually totally changed the demeanor of the total painting right so conservation proper conservation is also a service that is needed and that is a risk investment in art again like investment in stocks does not promise you liquidity all the time and assured growth all the time right you have to be patient and you have to also know the market properly right so there is no no proper geographical depth because still art market the art market is situated in some main centers a handful of large auction houses still control the market possibility of readily accessible data so lot of data has come out but still readily available data one has to search and most of this face a deficiency of government support right then what are the opportunities so art has always been a safeguard against inflation right apart from some lean patches we have seen that whenever the equities go down the art market will be due a good return theek hai art is one such investment which helps you in diversifying your investments art can be transported from one place to other unless it's a very large installation and there are when we said that it is a risk that there are no regulations so it is also an opportunity that there are not too many regulations which guide art right so still freely buy and sell art right? apart from some very big names right 
there are some artists who are ready available so you can get hussain at 5 lakh rupees today and the biggest positive factor is that that even if it does not give you a return it can give you the aesthetic value of just looking and possessing a work of art and a work of history right now we come to the last part of our presentation what are the principles and what is it that you need to look while investing in art so ideally art should form also a certain part of your investment strategy a certain part of your investment portfolio please take a look at the provenance and authenticity of the art that you are purchasing so always try to purchase from some source which is authentic right please see that works which have been previously exhibited or previously sold in auctions they can be purchased with certain amount of certainty and one of the most uh, the british pension fund so we say that art is very risky so the british sub uh, pension fund invested in art 125 years back and got substantial substantial returns it. right the condition of the work as we informed initially should be taken into consider theek hai it should always be when you are investing a large portion of money please take the help of an expert right and very importantly if your art does not give you the return that you actually intended it to give sorry yeah so please invest in art just for the love of art and for only for the benefit the returns you would earn out of it right invest with these principles in mind you will never face face any setback and you will be a happy person while investing in art now we come to the end of our presentation and i want to just tell you and as uh, uh, had already heard at the beginning of at the introduction stage this is the most expensive painting that has ever been sold in the world this is the leonardo da vinci painting which was purchased by the saudi arabian royal family for a whopping 450 million dollars in 2017 but very few people know that when this painting was sold the last time in 2012 it sold for only 12.5 million dollars so you can just guess that the russian millionaire who actually owned this painting in two th from 2012 to 2017 actually made a killing out of such hoping to right as a part of your overall portfolio for the love of the art that you are is worth investing and it will over a period of time give you not very out of the world returns but returns which would be substantial and returns which right so i end my presentation with this if there are any questions that you have you're most welcome please sure uh 
it's a, uh, it's been wonderful opportunity to interact with you sir thank you so much for such a fascinating and interesting talk now the house is open for participant questions and the first question we have is from uh, subbir kaur ma'am uh, he was uh, she was ask, uh, she is asking how can we uh, we assess the actual worth of an asset of an art sorry yeah so uh, this is what which i also mentioned uh, during my talk that actual worth the intrinsic value of artwork is very difficult to find out right but at this point of time there are any auction houses which work and they put a an estimate to an artwork based on their previous sales records so on that basis you come to know that this is something that this work may fetch right but at the end of the day it is for you and for lot of follow up and reading into that whatever is the work worth over a period of time right that you can find out the actual worth right because in auctions a lot of time the prices of works are inflated and sometimes the works quote at a lower price so if you read a lot go to a lot of auction data sales data you will be able to come out with an approximate value for artworks but as i mentioned earlier it is still a gray area and like the stock market where the demand and supply actually decides on the prices of artworks so uh, uh, the stocks the artworks are also sold and bought on demand and supply um then uh, thank you so much sir so next question is from dr bharti kukreja ma'am and she is asking how can a new painter commercialize his painting also please elaborate the term saffron paintings uh so i'll answer the first part uh, the first part is a new artist can always look at various avenues right so there are uh, exhibitions which are held on uh, on regular basis in various cities by art promotion agencies there are various uh, india level and international level art competitions that happen where a new artist can participate a new artist can also send their works along with their bio data to all the top auction houses and galleries across the city and across the world right so online sale of artworks actually makes all this possible uh, i did not get uh, the fact uh, about saffron paintings because uh, i have not heard about saffron paintings before i have heard about saffron art which is actually uh, an auction house uh, which is situated in mumbai and it is india's biggest auction house uh, thank you sir the next question that lined up is from uh, miss uh, miss neha gupta uh, she is asking how can we approach to art investment hello so you are not audible actually hello hello you is what you the hello hello are you able to hear me now ma'am no ma'am yeah so so uh, should i repeat the question yes please ma'am uh, sure uh, how can we approach to art investment yes yeah, so art investment approach i actually explained in my uh, overall uh, presentation right the first uh, uh, approach to investing in art is to actually go through a lot of art you can read on art you should attend exhibitions you should go and see various shows art shows you should read art about the place across the world the various schools and various genres that are famous and that are actually on money 
And that is how you can slowly get into the art world. For investing in art, you have to get yourself into the art world first. Yeah. Very right, sir. Uh, sir, the next question is from Dheeraj Chadda. He, uh, he wants to ask how the government is promoting the art market. Yeah, so the Ministry of Culture, uh, Government of India, if I were to talk about Indian government, right, has various uh, ways of promoting art, right? So there are many scholarships which are available at uh, right from school level, college level onwards, which are being given out to promising artists. We also have uh, awards which are given, uh, giving, uh, given out by the Ministry of Culture in the form of national awards to artists in various type of arts that they follow, right? Uh, then we have uh, the Lalit Kala Academy, which gives out awards to various artists, right? So uh, the highest of which is called the Fellow of the Lalit Kala Academy. And of course, there are various artists who have won the highest awards of India, which include Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, and Padma Vibhushan, right? So the government is, is uh, very much inclined towards helping artists in, in uh, getting up the curve and coming into the world scene. Okay, sir. So now uh, we are taking the last question of this session. That is from uh, Mohan Patel. He is asking, which sector is safe for investment for investor in the present time of COVID-19 and future time? Uh, so that's a very difficult question at the moment, uh, uh, sir, to answer because uh, so a safe investment does not necessarily uh, actually give you a great return. But if you were to see that uh, only safety is your criteria and returns is not, then I would suggest that investing in a fixed deposit, right, would be the right criteria for investment because that will be safe and that would be liquid also in these times. But you would always have that risk of interest rate and the interest rates, unfortunately, are going down over a period of time. But yes, from the point of view of safety, uh, a, say, uh, a fixed deposit with a bank or with the post office uh, would be something or with the RBI bond would be something which, which is advisable at this point. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for addressing all the questions so patiently. I think we have covered all the questions. If left, we will try to send the reply by mail. Art could be a lucrative investment option if you have patience to keep this investment for some time long. It comes with maintenance cost and before investing, always do your own research. Go for quality, not for quality while buying the art and try to invest in the emerging art. These are my takeaway from this session, and I hope so everyone have, has something to take away from this session too. This session wouldn't be completed thanking those who contributed best for this session, uh, for the success of this webinar, and it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks uh, on behalf of BSN Nankuria Educational Institute to our guest speaker, Dr. Saurabh Ghosh. Thank you so much, sir, for sparing your time and sharing your expertise with us. Participants of today's webinar, thank you so much for your kind support and active participation throughout the session. It was really commendable. Department of Management Study is extremely uh, thankful to our chairman, sir, Mr. Divya Gupta ji, for his leadership and guidance. So we need to mention our deepest sense of appreciation and to our principal, Dr. Pavan Bharana, sir, for his untiring support. Finally, I would like to thank the head of department management study, Mrs. Kamna Singh, ma'am, for her motivation that encourages us to do our best. A special thank to the organizing team, IT manager, and last but not least, to all the faculty members of the department of management study for their round the, uh, for their round the clock support. I would like to request all the participants to please turn on your vi uh, video so that we can capture a few memorable, uh, memorable mo moment for the success of this webinar. Please switch on your uh, videos, please. I request all the participants to please turn off your videos.
turn on your videos please thank you once again for joining us hope to see you again in our upcoming webinar session stay tuned thank you so much